And now I've added a 100 nanofarad capacitor into the circuit. So there's an L, a C, and an R, making this an LCR circuit. Now capacitors give a current output proportional to the change in voltage, while an inductor gives a voltage output proportional to the change in current. That means that these are going to send voltage and current back between each other, oscillating and ringing. And there's a characteristic frequency to that ringing, which for our 67 millihenry inductor and our 100 nanofarad capacitor is going to be 1944 hertz. So let's take a look at how this circuit responds to an AC input. On screen, the yellow wave is our inductor, the green wave is our input voltage, and the blue wave is our capacitor. I like to say cyan, C, capacitor. So we can see at low frequencies, our inductor doesn't have a lot of voltage over it. Again, this is because at low frequencies, and long time scales, an inductor acts like a short circuit. A capacitor behaves exactly the opposite. At low frequencies, it acts like an open circuit. It blocks any voltage from getting past it, and it takes all the voltage for itself. At high frequencies, it allows the voltage to go through. As we raise the frequency, you can see the voltage of the capacitor and the inductor both rise as they're sending current back and forth between each other, and it has very little time to get absorbed by the resistance. Then, as we approach the resonance frequency, the voltage across the inductor and the capacitor both reach their peak at the resonance frequency, 1944 Hz. But, as they go across resonance, they also shift across the screen. You can see below resonance, the voltage on the capacitor peaks whenever the input voltage peaks, while the voltage on the inductor troughs. Right at resonance, they both cross whenever the input voltage peaks. And then above resonance, the voltage on the inductor peaks whenever the input voltage peaks, while the voltage on the capacitor troughs. And then, As we go to higher and higher frequencies, the voltage of the inductor matches the input voltage while the voltage on the capacitor goes to zero. Now let's look at what happens whenever we charge up a capacitor and then release the voltage and let it ring back and forth across the circuit. Whenever we have as low a resistance as we can get, the circuit will be underdamped. So the inductor and the capacitor will ring back and forth and slowly exponentially decay to zero. As we increase the resistance, we increase the damping, and the voltage across the inductor and the capacitor decay much more quickly. Now let's zoom in on the first couple oscillations. Here we're getting pretty close to critical damping, where there's no more ring down. The decay happens before the ringing can complete a single cycle. And right about here, we've reached critical damping. Now, as we increase the resistance and the damping, the decay on the capacitor voltage will happen much more slowly, while on the inductor, it will happen more quickly. So what if we're looking at the current through an LCR circuit? which is often more useful to us because we know the input voltage, so knowing the current draw lets us know how much power the circuit takes. We remember at long time scales, a capacitor blocks current. It acts like an open circuit. So if our frequency is very slow, we're going to draw no current. On the other hand, if our frequency is very, very fast, our inductor acts like an open circuit. And once again, we will draw no current. We know intuitively that this will draw some kind of current in the middle. So if there's no current at low frequency and no current at high frequency, there must be a point where it reaches maximum current. Of course, that'll be near the resonance frequency. The signal generator itself is kind enough to give us a frequency, voltage amplitude, and current RMS reading. Here we can see at low frequency, we are receiving no current. As we start drawing close to the resonance frequency, 7100 Hz, we start receiving some current. 
up to a maximum of 150 milliamps. You young people might be able to hear a very high-pitched tone coming out of this oscillator. And then as we draw further away, we once again go down to zero amps. What if instead we set it up as a parallel circuit? Well, there's no point in measuring the voltage across each of the elements because they're all going to be the same as the input voltage. But we can measure the current again, and once again we can do a rudimentary look at low and high frequency. At low frequency, we know an inductor acts like a short circuit. So the inductor here is going to draw infinite current. At high frequency, a capacitor acts like a short circuit. So the capacitor is going to draw infinite current. So we have the exact opposite behavior of our series circuit, where we have infinite current at low and high frequency, and we reach a minimum current when we get to resonance frequency. Now, at low frequencies, we're drawing a fairly high current, 240 milliamps. And as we go higher and higher, that current drops. And in fact, it's immeasurably low, anywhere near the resonance frequency. And it picks up again once we start reaching into the high double-digit kilohertz.